What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Newest of the mods for the 2020 Platinum just arrived today and I'm pretty pumped for this one. We are going to be installing the NFAB MRDS pre-runner style front bumper on my 20 Platinum behind me here. So I've been eyeing this bumper up for a while. Finally decided to pull the trigger. Can't wait to get it on there and see what it looks like. So I'm going to show you how to get it done. Seems like a pretty straightforward install. Shouldn't be too hard at all. And I'll also show you what I'm going to do to modify it for my sensors on the front grill. The bumper does not come with any spots for the sensors. I am going to modify it to fit my my um, parking sensors on the on the NFAB bumper. So, all right, I'm going to get this thing unboxed and uh, I'll show you what we got to do to get started. All right, so we got the kit unboxed. What you're going to get is obviously the bumper. I have mine in the textured black finish. I may end up painting this to match the truck. I'm going to put it on the truck, see how I like it first in the black. Um, but I may end up painting it MGM or magnet magnetic gray metallic, the color of my truck, just to match it up. So, But we'll try it out this way just to see how we like it. So with bumper, then we have the two side pieces right here that go on the side of the bumper. You do not have to use them if you don't want to. I am going to put those on. I like to look with those on. So I'll show you how to get them installed. Then you get your NFAB skid plate right here. I'm also probably going to paint this to match the truck. I, I haven't decided yet. We're going to just kind of install everything stock or the way it came out of the box first just to see what it looks like, and then we'll go from there. So you have the bumper, the two side pieces, the skid plate, and then a bunch of hardware, which I'll show you what all that is for. So let me start by, I'm going to start by installing the two side pieces onto the bumper. And again, you do not have to use them if you don't want to. I'm going to, so let me show you how to get them on there. So your kit is going to come with 10 of these pieces that look like this. Mine are painted black. I'm guessing they're all going to be painted black. It's basically where you're going to screw the, the nut, I'm sorry, the bolt into, and it's got a little hooked piece on it. You're going to take five for each side. So I have five in my hand here. Then you're going to take five. Again, the kit comes with 10, five for each side. Take five of these little white, like plastic spacers or whatever you want to call them. And then these are the screws that you're going to use for these side pieces. It's a four millimeter Allen wrench. So again, four millimeter Allen wrench is what you're going to use to get these installed. So let me show you how this, how these actually hook on to the bumper. So you're going to take the bumper. You can't mess it up. It only goes on one way. Um, it, it's, you can't mix up the sides. What you're going to do is you're going to take this black piece and the black piece is going to hook around the bumper like this. And then you're going to line it up with the holes and you're basically going to put it you're going to put a screw let's just start with the middle one like that so then you're going to take the black piece here hook it around the bumper like that and the threaded portion is right here so then you're going to take i'm sorry i'm missing a step you're going to take one of the white plastic spacers put it on the back then you're going to line it up like so and until you get one or two started, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be kind of flopping around a little bit. Actually, what I'm going to do is let's start it like this. I'm going to start screwing it on before we even put it on the bumper. And then we'll just kind of hook it up around the back like that. Line it up, get it in place. And then you can tighten down your four millimeter Allen screw here. So once you have one done, you're just going to go ahead and repeat the process. There are, there are five spots where you're going to do this for. So again, you take your screw, put it through the front, put the plastic spacer on the back of the screw. And then on the bottom, it's obviously going to hook the other way. So it's going to hook up underneath the bumper like this. Find the screw in the back. Start screwing it down. All right, so we got both side pieces on. Definitely love the look with these pieces on here. So you can see how they fit. The only thing I do have to do is I do have to contact the company. The very last nut and bolt that I tried to put together, it won't screw in all the way. It's almost like the thread, something's wrong with the thread on them, but no big deal. I'll get that taken care of. Definitely love the way the bumper looks with these side pieces on there. Let me give you a look at the back of the bumper. Let me just tilt this forward here so you can get a good look at exactly how these go on there. Let me get you up close. So you can see how those pieces fit 
around the tubes of the bumper right there all right so that's how they go on the bumper and again that side piece I have it wrapped around the side like this instead of up over the top it just felt like it fit better coming over the side same thing on the other on the driver's side I did the same exact thing so all right so let's get the stock bumper off the truck and let's get this thing on all right first thing we have to do to get the stock bumper off usually you would have this piece up in here like this I had mine taken off just so it didn't rub on my 35s um, I had them on there for a while I trimmed a piece out of there but I took it off but anyway you would usually have this piece up in here these two 10 millimeter bolts right here would usually be holding this in place along with a pop rivet on this side over here that goes into the frame of the truck so all you would have to do is pop that pop rivet out of that side right there and then take these two 10, 10 millimeter bolts out so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And again, I don't necessarily have to do this right now um, because my the only reason you're doing this is that black plastic piece that I just showed you. You would have to do this to take that out of there. But I'll take mine off anyway because there is a bracket behind here that I'll show you. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, my driver's side is actually broken. So this bracket, yeah, it is my driver's side. This bracket right here is actually what holds that plastic piece in, in place, the one that I you know have out of there because of my 35s. So um, again, you, you wouldn't really have to take this off the truck like I'm doing right now. You would just have to take those two tens out of there to remove that plastic piece. All right, so I'm gonna do this same thing for the driver's side and for the passenger side. It's just the two 10 millimeter bolts and the pop clip. So once you have the splash guard removed, you can reach up and disconnect the fog lights if you have them. It's a simple clip that you can just unclip. And then you also, if your truck has parking sensors, you also have to disconnect the parking sensors. If you look where it is and then just kind of follow up behind the bumper, you can reach, not a lot of room to work, I won't lie to you, but the, the, the um, connection is right here behind the bumper. So just disconnect the sensor. Do that on both sides, fog lights and parking sensor, and then I'll show you what we have to do next. So once you have your fog lights disconnected and your uh, parking sensors disconnected, next thing you have to do is there are three Phillips head screws that hold the, um, the front valance to the skid plate. So we do have to remove those. And you can't miss them. They're right here, right up underneath where the valance connects to the skid plate. Just so you guys know, the tow hooks, they are 17 millimeter socket, just so you know what you need to use to take them off. Once you have the tow hooks removed, you can then access, there's four bolts on each side of the bumper, four up in here, four up in there. They're basically right above where the tow hooks sit, so you can't really miss them. These are 14 millimeter bolts, I'm sorry, 14 millimeter nuts, we do have to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the four on this side, loosen the four on that side. I'm not going to remove anything. An extra set of hands is going to come in handy here because once you remove those, the bumper is then free to come off the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up all eight, four on each side, and we'll go from there. So just wanted to give you a quick look at where these eight bolts are. Again, four on each side. So this is where the tow hook was. Remove the tow hook right above it. As you can see, let me see if I can get you up there. These four bolts, there's one here. I'm sorry, four nuts. That's what you're going to be loosening. There's one on this side and then three straight up and down on that side. You can't miss them. They're right above where the tow hooks are. So these are the four nuts on each side that you're going to be loosening up and removing to take the bumper off. All right, so once you have those eight 14 millimeter nuts loosened and removed, the bumper is now ready to come off the truck make sure you have all the wires wiring cables disconnected from the bumper as well the wires from the fog lights and from the sensors make sure they're disconnected from the rear of the bumper if not you're going to stress them obviously no good so you're going to need an extra set of hands all you're going to do is just kind of lift up on the bumper and pull straight out and just kind of wiggle it if it doesn't want to come at first and the bumper will come off the truck like that 
All right, so once you have the bumper removed, let me just give you a good look at what you're working with. You can obviously see it much better so you know what you're dealing with when you're trying to remove the bumper. These four spots right here and the four on the other side, those are the eight 14 millimeter nuts that I was referring to that you have to take off. And then these are the, these are the fog light harnesses hanging down, one on each side. You can see there's a couple clips where it connects to the inside of the bumper. So just make sure you um, detach those from the bumper before you go to try to take it off. And then if you have the parking sensors, you can see this white clip right up here. You can undo the parking sensors from that clip right there. And then once you have the bumper off, you can then remove the parking sensors from the bumper. It's much easier just to take disconnect the sensors right here and then deal with the sensors once you have the bumper off the truck. All right, so now all we have to do, now that we have the factory uh, bumper removed, basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the NFAB bumper, you're gonna line it up, place it right over here, and you are gonna reuse the factory 14 millimeter nuts to secure it on these, um, on these eight, um, screws or I'm sorry bolts right here so I'm just gonna grab the bumper we'll get it lined up and get it secured with the um, with the factory bolts all right guys now that the bumper is off let me show you the rear of it and the sensor cables and how to get those sensors out of the bumper if you wanted to take them out to put them in the new one so this cable that you see hanging here and this cable that you see hanging right there. Those are the two that you're gonna disconnect from the truck. They go to the sensors. So just wanted to give you a quick look at how it looks back here. You can see the sensors are up in the corners, right up in there. Not sure if that's coming out on camera or not, but let me put the camera down and I'm gonna show you what you have to do um, just to get those sensors out of the bumper. All right, so this is much easier to do with the bumper actually off the truck. So what you're gonna do, you have to come right back in here and the wiring harness, of course, is connected to the sensor. But what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna push from the back side here and the sensor is gonna pop out. Just be very careful. Just kind of slowly work it out of there. And what that does is it gives you a little bit easier access and better access to the actual wiring harness. And I might even have to grab some needle nose pliers to get this harness off there. But that's how you're going to pop the sensor out of the bumper and then once you just disconnect it from the wiring harness back here the sensor itself is free okay okay so there you go so that's what the sensor itself looks like as you can see the wiring harness just plugs into the back now once you have the sensor free again just set this on a soft surface it's you know you don't want to be too rough with that then what you have to do is the wiring harness itself is secured to the bumper support, which you can't miss the clips. So you're just going to take your needle nose pliers, which I did use the needle nose to get the um, wiring harness off of the sensor itself. Just makes it a lot easier because of the way the clips are. So that's up to you if you wanted to try to, try to use them or not. But I did find it easier to do with needle nose pliers. So once we have that done, there's two clips holding the wiring harness to the bumper support. And of course, there's not a lot of room to work back here. They never make it easy on you. The one you can get at pretty easily, which I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you guys what I'm doing. But again, there's not a whole lot of room to work. You wouldn't really be able to see what I'm doing right now anyway. All right, so as you can see, I have the bumper support separated from the end caps and the middle valance there. I'm gonna be selling the, the two end caps and the middle valance. I actually already have a buyer for them, but I just wanted to show you real quick. So here's the wiring harness. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is a pain in the butt to get off of this um, bumper support. I'm gonna show you real quick. So these are the types of clips. Let me see if I can get you a good look at them. So that's the type of clips. There's two of them that hold each wiring harness on, two on the driver's side, two on the passenger side. This is one spot. That's the easy one to get off. Obviously you can reach it pretty easily with your hands, but there's another slot right behind this piece. And unless you have hands the size of a five-year-old, <laughs> you are gonna have a hard time getting behind there to do it. So what I ended up doing was 
the the clip sits in there sideways like this so what i ended up doing was i took a long flathead screwdriver and i put took one hand held the harness down below here and then used the flathead screwdriver and pushed it in from one side and that freed up that side that tab there and then i went in from the other side with the flathead screwdriver and freed up the other side and that's what i got that's what i did to finally get that to pop out of there i just wanted to give you that little tip because again if you if you weren't sure how to do that that is a pain to try to get out of there i actually struggled with it for a few minutes until i thought about using the flathead um so just wanted to give you that little tip so that's how you get the wiring harness out of there and then you can just set this aside you're going to be reinstalling this in the new bumper if you choose to all right, so again, it's easier, obviously, with another person. All you're going to do on the back of the NFAB bumper, there are four holes that are going to line up with these four on this side and those four on that side. So you're just going to line them up. So you just line them up like that, and then you're going to take the eight nuts that we, that we removed, and you're just going to put those back in the same place that we took them off. That's what's gonna secure the new bumper. All right, so this is where we're at. We have all eight of the 14 millimeter nuts tightened down. Bumper is secured to the truck, as you can see. So all we have left to do now is the NFAB skid plate, which you can see six holes, two on each side, two in the front right here. So the NFAB skid plate has the holes to line up so you're going to take the supplied these are five and a half millimeter allen bolts so you're just going to take these with the nuts and washers to secure it to um, the bumper so i'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, we'll finish up the install now just so you know the factory skid plate does kind of get in the way i'm actually i'm going to put this nfab skid plate on just to see what it looks like i may end up trimming this but we'll we'll see we'll cross that bridge when we come to it i'm just going to get the nfab skid plate on see how it all lines up but it is going to be really close with this factory skid plate so i may end up trimming that or doing something with that just to make it look nice and neat and clean so i'm going to go ahead and get this nfab skid plate attached to the bumper with those six mounting locations all right guys so we ran out of daylight last night <laughs> so i figured i'd wait till today next day to wrap the video up give you a good look here in the daylight i'll put some pictures up on the screen as well maybe i'll add them earlier in the video actually but just just to give you a look at how it's fitting and I'll give you an up close look here as well. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna wait and do a separate video on the light bar installation and the light pod installation. I'm also gonna do a separate video on the parking sensor installation as well. Just, I wanna keep those separate just in case there's anybody who's just looking for that part of the video, I'll do those videos separate. So let me give you a close up look of the fitment here. I'm very pleased with it, fits very well. The only thing I will say is, which this is, I already knew this going into it, this lip does stick up over the surround of the grill just a tiny bit. No big deal. Again, I knew going into it, it was going to happen. The only bad part about that is if you ever need to take the grill off for any kind of mods or anything, it's actually, you're going to have to take the bumper off. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, we do have a 40 inch, a dual row 40 inch light bar that's going to go right here in the middle. We're going to do light pods on the the mesh area um, i'm either going to go with baja designs or rigid light pods and then of course we'll put the parking sensors in there as well i'll show you how we're going to do that don't forget to reinstall your tow hooks if you want them back on there and i'll also give you a pretty good look here the nfab skid plate there um, and you can see the factory skid plate where I trimmed it. Before I trimmed it and bent it up like I showed you, it was actually sticking out farther and almost kind of blocking part of the NFAB skid plate. It just did not look good to me. It didn't look clean. And I'm actually probably gonna even alter it a little bit more. It looks okay for right now, but I'm anal with this truck as I'm sure most of you are. So, but I just wanted to give you a look at the bumper installed. All right, so stay tuned for the, um, the light bar installation and also the parking sensor installation i will have those videos up as soon as possible and if i'm if they're done before i even post this maybe i'll even put the link up above you there so you can just click on them or i'll put them down in the comments either or so all right stay tuned as always if you have any questions comments concerns leave them down below we'll get them addressed thanks for watching and we will see you guys on the next video take care 
Hey guys, I'm adding this part onto the video. This is actually about a week after I've installed the bumper. So I just wanted to show you what I've done to make yourself, make your life a little bit easier when you're installing this for the first time. So what I've come to realize since I've put the lights in and everything, which you're gonna see in the other video, when you put the light bars in, especially if you're going with a full size, I, I'm putting a 42 inch bar um, that I'm installing up here. You cannot get, well, I shouldn't say you can't, but it's a nightmare to try to get the skid plate on um, after you get your lights on. So what I've done is I installed riv nuts. If you're not familiar with them, check them out. I've actually never used these before. All the projects I've ever done, I kind of find it hard to believe that I've actually never used these before. But what they are, instead of having to put a bolt up through there and then put a nut on the back of the bolt to get the skid plate attached, this is the size riv nut that you're looking for. You can see it on the package right there. And what this allows you to do, I bought a riv nut um, install tool off of Amazon. I think it was like 50 bucks. It was nothing crazy. And I installed these riv nuts. So now I can get all my lights attached and then I don't have to worry about getting my hand back here to get the nut on the back of the bolt. Literally all you do is put the skid plate up here and then the bolts just screw directly into these riv nuts and holds the, um, the uh, NFAB skid plate in place. Makes your life a heck of a lot easier. You're gonna see the light install, um, the light bar and the pods installed in a different video but just take my word for it if you are going to do a full-size light bar especially because you're not going to have any room to get your hands in here to get the nut on the back of the bolts um just do yourself a favor install some riv nuts in these holes so you can just screw the skid plate right onto the to the bumper and also i'll give you a look at what i did to the skid plate as you can see I finished trimming it off. So it basically just goes straight across right here in front of the two pieces that it hangs um, hangs on. So I'm just gonna hit this with some primer and some black paint so we don't get any rust issues on there. And uh, the skid plate will be done out of the way and makes it look nice and clean.